Okay, so uh, let me fix the light really quick here. So I think it's time to talk a little bit about why everybody is sharing these Ukrainian flags and, um, you know, how they really feel about the situation, in my opinion. And, you know, subconsciously, I think there's a lot more going on than most people realize, right? When somebody has no clue about the geopolitical situation of Ukraine, something I'm very familiar with. I'm not like a hardcore expert or anything, but I'm pretty familiar with the situation, right? You know, it's something I talked about and covered back in 2014 during the Ukraine revolution. I generally know what I'm talking about, right? So when I see people sharing the Ukrainian flag, I somewhat agree with them. And also though, I don't really take sides. You know, it's a very nuanced situation. I take an objective realist approach and people get pissed off at that. You have some people who are just, you know, psychotically supporting Putin that call me, I don't know, like a, like a new world order shill. And then you have others that are just blindly following the mainstream media and, you know, their fellow peers who really have no clue why they're doing it. They're just told it's good. So they do it as a virtue signal, as a way to signal to the population their virtue that, you know, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I support this. You know, it's a really easy way to earn social points without actually doing anything. All you got to do is share uh, an image. You know, it started, this is something that started back in like Coney 2012. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was like a social media craze in the middle of 2012 that all of a sudden everybody shared this video. It was like war propaganda from, you know, the defense department. You know, it was masquerading as this like <laughs> liberal sort of, I, I don't even know. It was like a promo video. You can, I think you can still find it. And it was like a U.S. operation on the U.S. population uh, to encourage everybody to support the idea of using the U.S. military to go into, I think it was, uh, where was it? Like Zimbabwe or something? Somewhere in Africa. I don't even know. Um, to, to like capture this guy, Coney, who uh, not many people remember this because it, it it fell on its face flat so quickly that, you know, it, that, and it never happened. You know, it was like this propaganda campaign to get people to support the idea of using the U.S. US military to go into Africa, basically. And it really only lasted a couple of weeks and then it died off. But it was like huge. It, it, it hit social media like like everybody I knew on Facebook shared it. At the time, Facebook was actually relevant, right? It was 2012. You know, it was the, it was the big new thing in 2012. Um, and uh, I don't know. I guess it just never happened. But, it, you know, they tried. They tried really hard. It was, you know, it was connected to the Department of Defense. And, like, you know, I think it was George Soros was involved in it. It was, it was this shady operation. So, um, you know, this kind of kind of is a little reminiscent of that or like when everyone shares the Black Lives Matter thing until, you know, Black Lives Matter burns down half the country. Then all of a sudden it's like they back off and they're like, oh, well, wait a minute. I don't know. I did support it, but now the science has changed. And, you know, that is a good segue into the next thing that happened, was, which is the COVID thing, where it was like, oh, my gosh, go get your vaccine. And then now they're saying, well, you know what? Ah. You know, we're not we're we're against mandates now and we're against, um, you know, yeah, man, all, all sorts of restrictions now. And the science has shifted when really just public opinion has shifted. And the science was the same to begin with. And I'm not allowed to state what the actual science is here on YouTube, but I think you understand. Let's just put it this way. People like me were right the whole time and now we're being proven to have been right the whole time. And we get zero credit because people are just installed with a new program now, with a new software. You know, people are like hardware, right? You, it's, they're like a computer. And you just install them with a new software to support the next new thing, <laughs> right? I support the current thing. <laughs> like, remember when it was like Orange Man Bad, Orange Man Bad? And it, for a while, it was just hatred of Trump. So that, that was another program, software program, right? And that's kind of like what these are. You know, they're, they're like, and, and I guarantee you, the average person, and th this, is what, this is what I don't like about it. And look, like I said before, I don't take sides in this. I, I'm not like, I, I'm a little bit more sympathetic toward the, the Ukrainian people because they're the underdog. And 
like like the whole thing is uh, very nuanced though because half the Ukrainian people want or like Russia. You know that they, they are very they have an affiliation with Russia. They 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 feel an aff- what do you call it? an affliction toward Russia? Is that what it is? You know what I mean? So like they they feel like a connection with Russia. And they consider themselves Russian, but there's some of them that don't. And they hate Russians. And by the way, a lot of those people or a good leadership segment of the anti-Russian um, uh, Ukrainian government or, or movement in Ukraine is neo-Nazi. Just so you know. So so when you when you support, you know the 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 anti. Russian, you know, defenders of Ukraine and Western Ukraine and Kiev and all that, in part, you are supporting, and I'll show you mainstream articles that talk about this, and this is something I've been talking about since 2013, 2014, when Yanukovych was ousted by the pro-NATO, pro-EU revolution that happened there to oust Yanukovych because he was a little bit too sympathetic toward Russia, right? And a lot of the people that led that revolution in Ukraine were neo-Nazis. You know, you had the uh, the maiden, uh, Euro maiden neo-Nazis, and all of these groups. So the, the, there was another one, the set, the right sector or something like that. Like so, these groups. I talked about them. I know. I know about what's going on there to a large degree. And yes, that's a huge part of that movement. Now, again, though, it's nuance. It's not like. You know, if you support the Ukrainian people in fighting the Russians, um, you support neo-Nazis, plain and simple like that. It's not quite like that, but you just got to understand, like, you are supporting to a large degree neo-Nazis. Just so you know, and like, fine, that's fine. You want to do that. I'm, I'm not like against you for doing that. I'm not like a crazy, you know, SJW who just thinks like everything I disagree with is evil. I'm not like that. Just I'm just saying, do you? Do you understand that? I'm just, I don't think you, I I bet you, you probably don't because you were just waving that Black Lives Matter fist like two years ago. So that's all I'm saying. So you support the latest thing. (laughs) Look at this. Hold on. (laughs) Why did this zoom out so much? I don't know, but it's still funny. Okay. And they're like computer programs, right? Of course, this thing's all screwed up now, but whatever. Can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, you can see it. Good. Yeah, they're like computer programs. For a while, it was COVID, you know? Um, What was it? You know, must spot the unvaccinated, must, mu- must spot the unmasked, must go after them, you know? And now, now, now they're backing off. Now they're backing off from the COVID thing. I just watched a... Uh, um, uh, Saturday Night Live skit where they kind of admit it. They were, you know, they kind of are like, well, you know, maybe the masks weren't, the mandates didn't really, you know. I can't even say what they said on YouTube. I'd probably be kicked off. I don't know if they still have the policy here on YouTube where, where you're not allowed to to really say. I, I don't. Maybe they're done with that though. I don't know because it's it's shifted so quickly now. All of a sudden, the science has changed. But it was the same the whole time. Science, the facts don't change. You, you can't just change science. You know, they came out and they said cloth masks don't work. Who was it? Was it the CDC or the... the um, uh, I don't even know. WHO or something like that. I, don't, I forget who it was. You know, a mainstream agency. I mean, you can look it up. It was very, very mainstream news. Um, they, they said cloth masks don't work. And... Uh, <laughs> and like I've been saying that for a long time and I was kicked off YouTube for saying that it's like am I just better than the experts is that what it is we're smarter than the experts and now they're saying all these all these things about the you know the, the vaccine when you know I, and, and more of that's coming out every day and I'm not gonna get into it here that's all I'm gonna say so Anyways, that being said, let's check this out. Did you know this? Far-right militias in Europe plan to confront Russian forces, research group says. And you can read about this. Um, 
inside the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion. This is one of the main... And, and like, I'm not against these guys per se. You know, they're fighting the Russians. I don't like how Russia, the Russians invaded Ukraine. I'm not a fan of that. So I'm like, I, I, I'm just like a, a regular guy just reporting on this, like from an objective standpoint. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to wave the Ukraine. I'm not a Ukrainian. I'm not going to wave a Russian flag. I'm not a Russian. I don't give a shit what happens for all that much. All I care about is innocent people don't get killed. And I am kind of rooting for the underdog. I got to admit, like, I'm just, that's just, I just like the idea of the underdog winning, right? And of course, the Ukrainian people that don't like the Russians are the underdog. Not that I'm rooting for the neo-Nazis. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> this is what we got, right? So, and this is out of uh, unilad.co.uk. But the other one I just, this is out of the New York Times, right? Far-right militias in Europe plan to confront Russian forces, a research group says. This is out of the New York Times, February 28th, 2022. This is out of Unilad, March 1st, 2022. A far-right neo-Nazi battalion has joined Ukrainian troops in their fight against invading Russian forces. Russian President Vladimir Putin's special military operation announcement continually referenced alleged neo-Nazi elements in Ukraine despite Ukrainian... Zelens uh, President Zelensky, a Jewish politician, beating out a non-Jewish candidate for the presidency by a huge margin. That's true. And that's, a, that's another nuance of the situation. Zelensky, in many ways, and, you know, this isn't very uncommon. You know, you got to understand, a lot of these, like, I know people probably find this hard to believe. But, like, if people have a, a common cause, you know, if people in Ukraine, especially Western Ukraine, want a leader that is going to propel the Russian influence, both militaristically and propagandistically, and, you know, slowly join them into the EU and into NATO, and that's what they want, they're going to work with people who disagree with them. What makes you think neo-Nazi groups who, who share similar interests as a Jewish guy who's the president wouldn't work with him? Like, they, he, a lot of these people aren't necessarily motivated by blind hate. They might be motivated by misinformation or different worldviews than you, but not necessarily blind hate, not all of them. That's what you got to understand. Like, you know, this isn't a Marvel book movie, right? This isn't a, a Marvel com comic book, okay? There isn't like necessarily, I do believe good and evil exist, but when it comes to geopolitical situations like this one, there's not necessarily a good and a, and a bad. You know, there isn't necessarily an, a good and evil here, or th there's just different elements of good and evil, like sort of mishmashing together in this nuance um, concoction of, of different um, allegiances and different uh, desires. And all of this. So that's what you have going on. The article continues to say, Putin cited the alleged genocide against millions of people living in the Donbass region and slammed NATO states for supporting extreme nationalists and neo-Nazis in Ukraine, who in return will never forgive the Crimeans and the Sevastopol uh, residents for choosing re reunification with Russia. I don't know how true that is. Um, they're saying that, you know, there was a genocide, maybe, I, I don't, I, again, like there's so much disinformation coming out of this. Oh, this would have been before even the invasion, I guess. But, um, but when it comes to the war there, especially, you know, you have so much disinfo and I talked about that in my latest podcast. It's just, it's the fog of war. You have both sides coming out saying completely different things, but the issue is, what we're receiving as Westerners, what what we're seeing in terms of lies are mostly the pro-EU sort of Ukrainian resistance lies coming from there because that's what our leaders and our corporate media supports. So they're willing to peddle lies toward their populations to further an agenda and, you know, it's almost understandable. Like, I understand, like, I'm not for lies, though. But I, I, I don't necessarily think it's not as much of an evil as if, you know, they were lying to totally, like, rob us. 
They're they're, they're more lying to 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 boister boister support in in the Ukrainian people and to uh, encourage the Ukrainian people to fight. I think, and to encourage us to donate to them. And it is kind of it's very manipulative. But you know, it's uh. You know, what in war, like I kind of get the idea of war propaganda. I'm a little bit less pissed off by it, but I just don't like lies and I will expose the lies and I'll show you some of those in a second. Um, <laughs> here we go. This is from Ash Sarkar. I don't know. This is probably like a, I think this is like a, I've heard of her before. Um, I think she's like a BLM activist. I don't know. But um, she goes on to say this on Twitter. The Ukrainian National Guard sharing explicitly racist propaganda from the Azov's, Azov movement is deeply worrying. As others have said, Russia exaggerates the role of the far right in Ukraine, but Western media coverage mostly ignores it as so to avoid copying Kremlin talking points. See, and she's exactly right. She's exactly right. I mean, she just hit the nail on the head right right there. You know, it's it, now it's whatever. You know, if you want to support neo-Nazis, you know, you want to donate to the Ukraine, Ukrainian resistance, you're supporting to a large degree neo-Nazis. Just so you know, fine. I'm not condemning you for it, but do you understand that? And that's the, pro, that's the thing. Do you know what you're supporting? You should. You should understand. Like if you're going to virtue signal and try to earn so, social points, amongst your, your friends groups on social media by posting the Ukrainian flag and saying how much Putin is, is, is a dummy or something. You should at least understand the geopolitical situation, right? This is one small element of it, but there's actually a lot more to it. But like most people don't even know why Putin invaded Ukraine. Most people have no clue why. Most people just think he's crazy, but there's actual real reasons why he did it. It's, it is very comparable to why Hitler invaded Poland in World War II in many ways. Um, should I go on this tangent? I'll go a little bit onto this tangent. You know, Hitler invaded Poland in World War II because in World War I, because of the Treaty of Versailles, you know, a lot of Germany was given to Poland and, you know, there were a lot of Germans in Poland, you know, throughout the 20s and the 30s that were treated very, very badly by the Polish government. And Hitler basically invaded Poland in, in the late 30s um, because he wanted to sort of liberate the, the Germans there. Many of the Germans wanted him to invade, you know? So, like, it was kind of like a... Um, I mean, it was ethnically motivated, but it was also like he was going to genuinely sort of uh, rescue his people, at least from his perspective and from their perspective. <laughs> right and from their perspective so that's why he did that i'm not saying hitler is a good guy obviously i'm just saying that's why he did it so and that's what started world war ii to a large degree and then here in ukraine is very similar so i don't necessarily think there was a genocide i could be wrong i don't know much about that right putin saying there was a genocide of the pro-russian ukrainians in the donbass region I don't know, but I would probably wouldn't be surprised if they were mistreated by the Ukrainian government, by the pro-EU, anti-Russian Ukrainian government. Would not be surprised, well, obviously. I mean, there was still a kind of a civil war going on, going on, you know? So, so, and that's why he sort of invaded, you know, because a lot of the people who supported Russia in Ukraine and a lot of the people who didn't like the Zelensky regime and we're being mistreated by them, welcomed Putin to a large degree invading Ukraine. So, so, and it is regional though. So that's why I'm very surprised and I am opposed to Putin going further into the Western regions where he isn't wanted. I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. And I think he might have overplayed his hand doing that too, by the way. Um... Did I already read this part? I don't even know. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Okay, and the article goes on the state. 
While the talk of Nazism in Ukraine is completely out of place, one analyst told DW, footage emerged this week of Azov fighters greasing their bullets in pig fat, seemingly seemingly used to, uh, to be against Muslim Chechens deployed as part of the Russian forces. These combatants who are, uh, who are, who, are who put put are I cannot read today. <laughs> I cannot read today. These combatants are who Putin was believed to be referencing in his phrase demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. The Azov Battalion is a far right all volunteer infantry military unit that allegedly supports white supremacist ideologies and has also been involved in training civilians to fight against invading troops. They first fought alongside Ukrainian soldiers against the pro-separatist troops in 2014. Like I said, like I even talked about in 2014. I know what I'm talking about. And have since been embedded in the military. Yeah, and again, and have since been embedded in the military. So when you are supporting the anti-Russian regime and soldiers to a large degree, just so you know, which is fine. I'm cool with it. You want to support the neo-Nazis in, in Ukraine? That's fine. I don't care, you know. Just understand what you're doing. That's all, you know. Don't be, don't be a computer. Don't be an NPC. Don't be this guy. You know? <laughs> Putin man bad, Putin man bad. That's all they know. That's all they know. <sighs> Anyways... It goes on there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, you also got to understand how this whole situation started. You know, in a nutshell, what it comes down to was after the collapse of the Soviet Union, um, Ukraine became its own country, uh, and Western leaders agreed that NATO would not expand eastward into Ukraine. Ukraine would not be joining NATO and NATO agreed to not increase its territory eastward toward Russia because it's a major threat to Russia. When you have the world's nuclear powers surrounding you with missiles, that's a big deal, right? So, but essentially what happened was there were some deals struck um, so one of them being the U.S.-Ukraine Charter on Strategic Partnership in 2008, which emphasized the continued commitment of the United States to support enhanced engagement between NATO and Ukraine. So that violated previous charters. So in 1997, before that, what this was violating, and what uh, all these steps were taken that violated the original agreement to not have NATO, NATO expand eastward. Again, that's a, that's a huge threat. So, so yeah, with all this going on, you know, people just need to understand, you know, and by the way, like I said before, some of these groups that are very anti-Russian in Ukraine, ever since the original revolution in 2014, like Svoboda and Right Sector, you know, these are neo-Nazi groups. They wear the neo-Nazi slogans and symbols. And the, the, this is, the, it's not the whole, the, you know, it's not like it's a neo-Nazi government in Ukraine. I'm not saying that, but again, just so you know. You know, it's like, it's like this. It's like, you know, the, 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 these are the same people that will crucify you and call you a Nazi for interviewing somebody who has right-wing perspectives. And, you know, get like Joe Rogan, for instance, right? They'll cancel him for having somebody like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what Alex Jones on or something, you know, and they'll call Alex Jones a Nazi or something. And, and then, so, but meanwhile, these people are supporting Nazis, right? right? It's all this, these NPCs, they're, they're hardware, they're computers. They don't, they're not, it's almost like they don't have a soul or something. I don't, I don't know. Or they don't have a mind. Maybe they just don't have time to research it. I understand that, but I mean, I don't know, man. So yeah, those are my general thoughts on the situation. If you so want to support my work, I have a Patreon link in the description box below. I have crypto addresses. And most importantly, though, please just like, share, and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Give the video a thumbs up. Smash that like button, as they say. Literally punch it. Punch it in the face. And um, 
share the video. And drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. It's been Press. Keep your head up. Stay real. And no fear.